Hi, and welcome to today's session, where we'll be talking about the new accelerator optimized VM family, targeting machine learning and HPC workloads. My name is Chris Kleeman, and I'm the product manager of GPUs. And I want to start talking about what my goal is, why I show up to work. And it really comes down to helping you with your application. Some customers pick infrastructure as a service to run their fleet, some PaaS or platforms as a service, or managed service offerings. No matter what you pick, the key to success is the right infrastructure. Performance, total cost of ownership, reliability, security, so on and so forth. So to that end, we want to make sure the best GPU compute is enabled on Google Cloud. Not only that, we want to make it easy to get started, easy to scale, and easy to optimize performance. But it's not just the infrastructure, it's all about your workload. It's about machine learning, or rendering, or CUDA compute, or HPC, or visualization. We want to make sure we have the right products that fit your needs. So let's talk a little bit about that and talk about how committed we are to that goal. Last year, we were very proud to announce that we were the first major cloud to offer the T4 GPU. This is a very low cost compute option with great performance for inference, visualization, or a lot of scale out compute. Every day I'm staggered by the growth of this product line. There's one customer who's done Thomas Vehicle customer, and they do large scale simulations to ensure that self-driving cars are safe on the road using the T4 GPUs. On the other side of the spectrum, Let's talk about the best performance. Historically, we've had the K80 and P100 and V100, new products all the time. And continuing on that, last month, I'm super proud to announce that we're the first cloud to offer the A100 GPU. You can come and get it today, sign up for the alpha and get access right away. Not only that, I'm proud to say that we go up to 16 of these GPUs in a single VM. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. As you can see on the right of the picture, these HDX boards and A100s from NVIDIA, there's eight of them on a board with special NVLink, and it takes special server hardware to house them. So Google Compute Engine, infrastructure as a service on GCP. Historically, we've been one family shop, one product, the N1. It was great because they serve all workloads. You can customize it to your needs. The right CPU, the right memory, the right storage, optional in-server SSD, network attached storage, and you can add GPUs as you want. What type of GPU, how many GPUs. Very customizable. We've continued that family with the N2 and the N2D for Intel and AMD CPU processing. But we went left and we went right. We went low cost, cost optimized E2 VMs, right, for customers looking for the best TCO for CPU-based compute. But then we add a suite of new VM families targeting specific workloads. This is where we looked at the workload and we said, what does this need to succeed? We built special hardware, special virtualization configuration, and that's what today's new accelerator optimized A2 VM family is about. Let's talk a little bit more about that. Before talking about our family, let's talk about the key component of the A2 VM which is the new NVIDIA A100 GPU that they just announced. This is a generational leap of performance over the current V100, up to 20x speeds. Floating point 64 precision, over 2x speed improvement. This is used for scientific computing, HPC workloads that you really need high accuracy. FP32, kind of the de facto ML training out of the box, you turn it on, make it go without any optimizations. Here, the A100's Ampere technology, the new TF32, really shines up to 10x speed improvements or 20x speed improvements when you use NVIDIA's optional sparsicity feature. FP16, again, two, 5% increase in performance roughly, right? And int 8 precision, 10 or 20x, great for ML inference batch. So a lot of performance, and it's going to be just a very minor price increase on V100. So it's going to have the best TCO for GPU powered compute workloads. A little more on the TF32 tensor cores. 
we're getting far into how the data is processed and stored here, but really there's two key things I want to point out. TF32 versus FP32. Today, a lot of code that just points to FP32 will out of the gate switch over to TF32. And NVIDIA spent a lot of time to make sure that for that processing less data, you get much more performance. And for a lot of workloads, it doesn't matter because the ML model's prediction, how accurate the model actually is at detecting a person or doing a translation, isn't really impacted by the, and you get better performance. Also new on A100s, the support for BFLOAT 16. So four different models for ML training that you could use here, and it's very flexible. Pick the one that meets your workload needs. I'd like to talk about a new feature on the A100, the multi-instance GPU. I'm really excited this for two reasons. First, it allows multiple applications at the same time to be on a single GPU. You can create two partitions, anywhere up to seven partitions. And not only does it allow you to create or run multiple applications on a single GPU, it creates fault isolation, performance guarantees, right? so that you don't have to worry about one app running into another. Additionally, a very common enterprise-focused buying mechanism is to commit to long-term usage, like a three-year committed usage discount on these new A2 VMs that we're about to talk about. But there's some risk to that. The risk is we've already told you we're gonna launch the best GPU hardware there is. So what if we launch some new hardware before your commitment's up? This multi-instance GPU feature in a way is future-proofs your investment. You might run a single workload for ML training on full GPUs, on one GPU, eight, 16, whatever, for years. But maybe your business changes, right? Maybe you wanna run inference because you've done the research on the training already. So you switch to these multi-instance GPUs and you run different workloads on it. So it's dynamic, it's future-proof, and it also increases overall efficiency of your infrastructure. Now, I'm not a data scientist, so I'm just gonna give you a high level overview of sparsity, but it turns out you don't need to process every single data point and every single calculation in an AI neural network. So as the graph shows, just doesn't do it. But by just not doing some, again, doesn't impact accuracy of the models, and you get a 2X speed improvement. NVIDIA is going to include some software and some features that make this easy to implement. And you can judge yourself whether or not to turn this on based on your needs of accuracy. So altogether, a lot of improvement in the A100 GPU. So let's pivot and talk about our A2 VM family. So again, we started with the ML workload. We started with HPC. And we figured out what does it need? So the first thing that got us excited about the A100 GPU was the 40 gigabits of memory. This is really needed because of ML models are getting more innovative, which means more data. Same thing with HPC or GPU powered databases, right? It's about data is getting bigger and you need to store more of it and process more of it. This is the largest GPU memory in this family of V100 and P100 models to date. We offer 16 of these GPUs in a single VM which means you can get a staggering 640 gigs of GPU memory in a single host. On top of that, we take two Cascade Lake CPUs from Intel with 96 CPUs and up to 1.3 terabytes of memory. This is really important because two reasons. One, some customers come to us, whether it be financial or ML or science, and saying, I just have a too big of a data set. My GPU power I need might be variable, but I need to have the VM with a big memory size. So one, the memory size is large, much larger than past products. Two, we have a 2x ratio, right? 640 G of GPU memory and 2x that on VM memory. And that's because we want to allow for pre-processing of data, pumping it into the GPU and high performance for the actual workloads. Google's known for being an AI expert, and we worked very closely with those people to ensure optimum performance of this configuration. 
we didn't stop there. We took NVIDIA's NVLink 3 technology and made GPU to GPU communication ultra fast that we'll talk a little bit more about. We continue optionality in the sense that we allow you to use network attached storage or bring in server local SSD storage for faster disk IO. For virtualization, we spend a lot of time saying, how do we get you consistent performance? How do we optimize performance? And how do we make it transparent in a way that your application could take best use of this infrastructure? So we made a lot of improvements on VNUMA right, and NUMA scheduling to get those characteristics for you. For scale out workloads, we spent a lot of time on the network stack. You'll see the A2 family comes with two flavors, the high GPU flavor and the mega GPU flavor. The high GPU flavor goes up to eight GPUs and 96 V CPUs. That's great if you need a little bit more pre-processing power for image recognition or other type of workloads, right? With 12 CPUs per one GPU. Also comes with 100 gigabits of network performance. So if you want to scale out more linearly, right? The high GPU is a nice flavor to have. But for the customers who want the ultimate GPU parallel performance, we have the A2 Mega GPU. 16 GPUs, 100 gigabit networking, local SSD, high RAM. On both of these two flavors for scale out workload, we spent a lot of time optimizing the NVIDIA Nickel library. If you just take the open source out of the box library that enables VM to VM communication versus what we have for an optimized version of that, that we make available to you in something we'll explain later, there's a 70% or up to 70% speed improvement for these network tests. And when you're scaling your workload to one VM, two VMs, 10 VMs, hundred VMs, and so on and so forth, that's really important. Let's look a little deeper on this A2 mega GPU VM instance. So NVIDIA has delivered these HGX boards. There's eight GPUs, A100s per board, and there's a high-speed NVLink fabric allowing for GPU-to-GPU -GPU communication on a single HDX. But we've worked closely with NVIDIA to provide a server platform that combines two HDX boards with a very tightly intercoupled NVLink fabric. So now you have 16 GPUs with all-to-all -all NVLink connectivity with 9.6 terabytes per second of peak bandwidth. Why that's important is it allows you to couple of things. One, it allows you to use the 640 G of GPU memory as a unified memory fabric through support of the CUDA tool sets. Also, what it does enable you is really linearly to scale performance. It's the ultimate scaled up box because of the GPU to GPU connectivity. But in terms of scale out, again, I talked about the network performance where you could have multiple of these systems running together that makes BERT training go very fast or any type of ML model training. Also works very well for a lot of HPC workloads. In terms of performance of one of these VMs, for FP16, 10 petaflops of performance in a single VM, or 20 peta ops for inference. These terms, these numbers, maybe are meaningless, maybe they mean something to you, but what they mean is a lot of performance, really good TCO, for the same amount of budget, you can get a lot more work done, which means a lot more innovation or enabling you to focus on the things that matter for your business. In terms of applications, NVIDIA has spent a lot of time working on how do I enable more and more with CUDA compute in our GCP marketplace or via NVIDIA's GPU cloud, there's pre-packaged containers with tons of applications that are ready to go that have GPU power. You don't need to worry about installing the drivers or the applications. Just get the container, run it on Google Cloud, run it on the A2 or any of our GPUs. For AI workloads, we've been talking a lot about that bottom stack on this picture, the infrastructure layer. We're committed to providing the best infrastructure no matter what, no matter what your choice of hardware is. Up above the stack, Right? If you don't want to worry about the infrastructure on GCE or in Kubernetes Engine, both support the new A2 VM, we have the AI platform. This is a managed service offering. 
It allows you to do ML training as a service, predictions as a service, get quickly started with notebooks. You don't have to manage your capacity pools or worry about anything like that. Just have your data scientists use the tools that's best for them, powered by these new VMs that I've been talking about. Going up a stack in the layer one more time, we have AutoML. This is where you can create custom models for your business based on your data, but you don't have to know Python, Torch, you don't need to know TensorFlow. You just bring your data, let us do the work for you. Or we have a bunch of APIs that developers could just quickly access the development language of their choice using a series of pre-trained models. Things like vision or translation get started super quickly. All of this is powered again by world-class infrastructure, including these A2 VMs. Let's talk a little bit more about performance improvements, right? For real workloads. I talked before about just how many operations a second can the thing do. But really what matters is the workload. So for ML training, one of the most data demanding, GPU demanding applications is the BERT language model, right? Teaching a computer how to understand language, how to have conversations. It's a very popular one right now. And you can see a 3X or a 6X improvement over the V100 previous generation. We, our own internal tests, have seen workloads that have taken about a week, take about a day. Our customers on our alpha are reporting using FP16, real world scenarios, very close to that 3X improvement. I believe I saw it was a 2.8 last I checked. So these numbers provided by NVIDIA, we are seeing real similar things from our customers. On inference, again, A100, big step forward over V100. T4 is still a great product, but sometimes you want a little bit more bandwidth on inference. For batch workloads, you could use seven of those GPU partitions to get a really large amount of inference workloads. And for some workloads, it's not just inference, right? Perhaps it's reinforcement learning, right? That's using a model to do game simulations and at the same time training the model as well. So both of these are really important, right? For these large scale workloads. So hopefully it should be very clear why and how the A2VM on GCE is going to be the highest performance. And while we haven't announced public pricing yet, trust me, it's going to be the best TCO on Google Cloud. Let's talk a little bit about GPU accelerated Apache Spark. Now what Spark is, it's a framework, it's a tool set. A lot of data scientists and analysts use this software. In the old world, Spark 2, it would be a CPU cluster. You'd pipe a bunch of data in. You would process that data, format it, maybe remove PII information. You put it in storage. And then you would have to have another cluster of configuration hardware that would do an ML model training or an HPC job or run an analysis. So NVIDIA and Google worked together to help speed up that by bringing GPU power to both model training as well as data preparation. Spark 3 supports both of this through Rapids. And now Google's managed service data proc, right, supports Spark 3.0 clusters and all six of our GPU product offerings from an infrastructure perspective. I'm really looking forward to seeing how customers can use these really large A100 VMs right, for data preparation and model training. So we talked a lot about A100. We talked about AI and HPC workloads. We talked about performance. It's the newest thing. It's very high demand. It's alpha is available today. There's a sign up form. Please sign up. But it's not just the only thing we have. We have five other GPUs, all doing a wide range of services whether it be ML training or inference, rendering, computation, visualization, will have a product to meet your needs. While we have all of these, and you're happy and welcome to use any of them, I wanted to talk about the T4 a little bit. Now, since the launch, what we've noticed is there's a very high demand 
for a VM with maybe a variable amount of CPU and memory and some GPU compute power. And I think because of that, we've seen a lot of growth, more growth than we would expect, both in the inference use case, social media companies, self-driving car simulations, batch workloads, real-time streaming workloads. I want to talk a little bit more about inference for a second. So GCP thinks the T4 plus our spread region availability plus our network offers a great global low latency inference product. Low latency inference is really important because a lot of user experiences have predictions and AI built into them. Whether you're on a mobile app and you're interacting with AR, right, and seeing pictures, or if you are getting ads and you want those ads specifically recommended to you, or you're using sort of game where the game has AI intelligence built in, if it's slow and laggy, your users aren't going to want that. So the T4 has ultra low latency for the inference, just one millisecond. You combine that with our global availability of the product spread around the world, we're going to have capacity close to the user base of high populations. And the third major component of this is our network. I've come from a network background myself, and I'm very familiar with how networks operate. And there's two things that really surprised me about Google's network and why they'll help here. One, just the sheer investment, fiber optic cables, points of presence, software defined networking. This network stack was built right at first for ultra low latency. That's how do we get Google search to your web browser as fast as we can. And we've added YouTube and video streaming and a series of other services for high bandwidth use cases. That same network that's optimized for that is what powers Google Cloud. And one feature specifically, the Google Cloud default internet networking connectivity is, could be called cold potato routing in the sense of we don't want to get rid of your traffic and pump it on the internet as quickly as possible, regardless of packet loss of issues. We optimize how do we do it low latency? How do we connect directly with ISPs? And let's hold it over our own fiber and our own network as long as possible to that end user. So the combination of those things means global availability, low latency in the GPUs, a great network. So a very high quality user experience for real-time inference workload. Let's talk about preemptible GPUs. In essence, this is our spare capacity and your cost savings. There could be a lot of reasons why we have spare capacity. Maybe we're building ahead of time before demand, or maybe other users are running batch workloads that spin up thousands of GPUs at one moment and zero GPUs at the other. But either way, there are moments we have spare capacity. So we make it easy to find that with Kubernetes engine or a feature I'll talk about next. But what one customer did is they said, how do I use Kubernetes, preemptible GPUs, and how do I do more with the same? So they were processing hundreds of thousands of music files and then went to processing millions of music files all for the same budget. We made it easy for them through preemptible VMs and they saved 70 or 80%. There is a downside, which is you can't always guarantee this capacity will be here. So you got to have flexible completion times. In this case, it worked out. There's a blog link in our blog. You should please go check out. And thank you for the customer's story. Really appreciate that. To that end, I talked about not only having the best GPUs, but making it easy, making it easy to scale. The previous example was on Kubernetes, but perhaps you use VMs on GCE. So for a long time, we've had managed instance groups that allow you to scale up and down GPU capacity or any capacity. But we have a new feature that lets you find spare GPU capacity called the distribution shape any. So instead of worrying about how much capacity we have where and working with our capacity team, just create yourself a managed instance group, set your targeted region, set the targeted quantity of capacity, and allow us to find those VMs capacity for you. This is specifically useful in the preemptible case, right? Where you know you're only getting access to our spare capacity and why not let us find that for you? So I'm excited to see the usage of this so far. Let's talk about another exciting way we make it easy to get started 
and to get high performance. The deep learning environment. When I first started as a product manager a few years ago in GPUs, I do what normal product managers do. I try the product, I listen to users. And one of the things way back then, I was surprised to find how easy it was to use the infrastructure or create it, but how hard it was for the software. So deep learning environments meant to solve that. They pre-configure the drivers, the libraries, they pre-configure uh, PyTorch or TensorFlow, a series of applications, and they package it as VM images or containers. Not only that, they put in performance optimizations, like the Nickel library we talked about before. Easy to get started, easy to scale up. Let's talk a little bit about TensorFlow Enterprise. For some customers who perhaps want enterprise-grade support or just those cloud-scale performance optimizations, these DLVMs or containers that we talked about before are there for you. Not only in that, the teams worked hard to get access to TF1 and TF2 supporting the A100 available today that's not quite available in the open source TensorFlow. So really excited to see that and our alpha customers already running on TensorFlow 1 and 2 on our A2 VMs. And to wrap up today's talk, I just want to show you how simple it is to get started with all the things. Let's say I have a TensorFlow 2 code I want to run or a notebook. I spin up a G Cloud command, pick the new A2 VM family, size one GPU. I pick the prepackaged VM container that has everything I needed, all the performance optimizations and software. I hit enter, I get infrastructure, I connect to the Jupyter Notebook, and I get started. I want to thank you for listening to today and learning about the A2 VM family, new on GCE with NVIDIA A100s. We are now in alpha. I encourage you to sign up and get started right away. Our public availability will be soon. Thank you and have a great day.